Hi. You know how uh, in a movie there'll be dialogue and then music comes in and it makes, uh, it transports the scene. And I think in a lot of ways music makes mediocre actors great legends, you know? <laughs> because the music somehow um, adds to it's like mixed media or something, it adds to the dialogue. I, I remember being on stage <clears throat> when I was younger and engaging in dialogue and the music would come in from the orchestra and uh, it would even excite me, you know, because it changes everything. So years ago, I was giving a meditation. Well, I was giving a talk actually. and. Uh, before a meditation, like I am here, I guess. And uh, I asked people, I said, you know, if you could have a music that would characterize your life, that you would carry with you throughout the day, that would describe who you are, your essence or whatever, what would it be? So I would like to ask you that same question. If you could have some type of music, a piece of music, whatever, something musical that could be in the background of your everyday activities, what would you choose? And, you know, it takes some time to think about that. If you do think about it, you'll come to some realizations about who you are. It's really quite remarkable. So, uh, you know, I, I, um, I'm grabbing the meditation bell here now. I'll try to meditate for 15 minutes. I used to have two phones and I would time on one phone, but I, I gave one of the phones to a grandson, so I no longer have that. I'm gonna to have to use my handy dandy watch, which my, one of my kind sons gave me. It's a very expensive watch. I don't know if I deserve it, but uh, okay. I'll try to uh, time this meditation for 15 minutes. And you can meditate for a while, but anyhow, think about the music. Here we go. to become aware of your body? How do you feel physically? What's your body saying to you? Please take some time to thank your body for taking care of you. 
so very unselfishly. Become aware of your in-breath and your out -breath. Feel the sensation of your breath going in and out. Now, become aware of the peak of your in-breath. and the bottom or trough of your out-breath. In, out. The height of the in-breath, the highest point, and the depth of the out-breath, the lowest point, are very significant. These are the moments we use to stop thinking. Just for a fraction of a second, stop thinking at the height of the in-breath. Stop thinking for a fraction of a second at the very bottom of the out -breath. Those spaces between the in and out breath. These moments are key to no mind meditation, <clears throat> developing no thought during meditation, which is so healthy for us, healthy for our bodies, healthy for our minds and state of being. And don't forget to be you. No one can teach us how to meditate. We all teach ourselves. And you get to develop your own meditation style over your life's journey. It'll change, maybe. So we have about 10 minutes left of meditation time and we can use this to practice no mind.
<laughs> that was close to 15 minutes, give or take a few minutes. You know, I always think of my meditation practice as being wabi-sabi. We don't want a perfect meditation practice. We want wabi-sabi meditation practice. Because everything's wabi-sabi. We're wabi-sabi. There's always some impermanence and imperfection in everything we do, and it's beautiful. Uh, in closing, well, I want to say one other thing. I, I keep the meditations to 15 minutes because it seems like the brain works in 15-minute cycles. For example, if we're learning something, it's better to learn in 15, for 15 minutes and drop it for at least 15 minutes and come back and, and repeat and going on and on and on and on, which I had done in the past, which was a mistake. So everything exists in types of cycles of various lengths. And one of them is meditation and the brain. I want to talk about, uh, in closing, I want to talk about being yourself. Most people are not themselves. Everyone's walking around as a type of fiction. And it's all because of social pressure, which is very strange because it's really not generated by the mass of people. It's very strange. And I have to tell you, uh, you know, very few pe people know who I am. Maybe one, two, or three, or four people in my life. So in a way, I walk around outside to the marketplace, wherever, uh, like a ghost. But inside, I know who I am. And I um, come to know who I am more and more over time, working on it just really looking inside, which is very difficult. It may seem easy, maybe easy to uh, in a heroic consciousness, but if we, if we look inside, we see how different we are than what's expected externally. It becomes difficult. But we need to start doing that. We need to start developing a world where everyone is who they are. They are anyhow. Why hide it? Why wear masks? It's time that ends. Anyhow, have a good day. Bye-bye.